Were you around yet for fantasy in the 1960s? I wasn't. But fortunately, the books still were when I started reading, and there's some great ones. Today, my top 10 fantasy books of the 1960s. Hi, I'm Jim with Fantasy for the Ages. Welcome back to my series on the best fantasy through the decades. Top 10 lists, one after another. I've already got the 1950s out. If you missed that one, go back and check it out. There's some great foundational books in the fantasy genre. But here we are today, the 1960s, where things broaden out a little bit. And a new element really leans in into fantasy fiction, and that's books that are more targeted towards younger people. I didn't find, as I reviewed the books of the 60s, as many of the big foundational epic fantasies that I need, uh, needed to have in my TBR. But I found some real gems that are targeted towards the younger audience that are still worth a read. Uh, things that I read when I was younger, and if you somehow missed them, you might want to go take a look. None of them are going to take you a long time to read. They tend to be shorter, but they're great stories of fantasy, and they did craft writers of today into the people they are. So it might make sense to go get some of these. Nevertheless, there are some big classics in here in the 60s that I made sure to get on this list. And let's get to it and see how many of these you've read and if you agree with me. Number 10 from the 1960s is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. 1964. This is a story that's been turned into two different movies now. It's well known as a story, and it's just adorable. Charlie and the Golden Ticket getting to go to the chocolate factory. And wow, that guy in the chocolate factory, Willy Wonka, he's something different. He's a little wonky. And the Oompa Loompas, I mean, all the stuff in the story is great. It's also a bit of a morality lesson. You know, if you are greedy or self-centered or selfish, things don't work out for you. But if you're just a kind, nice person, things might come out in the end. Very entertaining. Number 10 from the 60s for me. Number nine, A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle, 1962. This is actually book one of a quartet of books, and it's fantasy, science fiction all blended together, but really more leaning into the fantasy. Just a, a wonderful story of young people, again, getting caught up uh, with an adventure because dad is missing now. And uh, the ladies that help them, uh, Mrs. What? Mrs. Which? And, you know, I, I really enjoyed reading this story. I went back and read it again when I was older, and I'm like, this kind of holds up. There, there's quality in this book. So if you somehow missed A Wrinkle in Time, go check it out. I know there's a movie out there, too. I Probably more than one, but the most recent, I have not watched it. Maybe I don't want to mess with my memories of the book, because the book is just fun. Number eight, Oversea Under Stone by Susan Cooper in 1965. This is another book targeted at the younger audience. It's the first of, of the Dark is Rising sequence. When I stumbled upon it early in my 20s, actually, as part of teaching, I was reading books that my kids, I was a fifth grade teacher, might want to read. I was like, this is fantastic. What a captivating story. And I went on to read the rest of the series. I recommend it. And that's why it's number eight on my list. Again, fantasy that's aimed at younger people, this would be aimed at middle grade students, often holds up for an adult reader. But you can get through it pretty quick because they tend not to be as long. Number seven, The Book of Three by Lloyd Alexander, 1965. This is the same series as The Black Cauldron, The High King. There's five books in the set, but it starts with The Book of Three. 
and its foundational adventurous fantasy fiction. You've probably read it. Uh, the Chronicles of Pradain is the name of the set. I recommend you go back and check it out if you didn't get it the first time around. And again, it starts with The Book of Three. Number six, The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle, 1968. This is one I must admit I have not read yet. It's on my TBR. I've had many of you recommend it to me. I've looked at the reviews on it, and I feel like, oh yeah, this is one of the best. And when we're talking about books written for adults, it's the first one that I'm going to put on my 60s list. I am the least familiar with it because all the other ones on here are ones I know about more. Uh, most of them I've read. But The Last Unicorn, it's appealing. It's it's pulling me. And I believe there is a movie adaptation of this too. I don't know if it's any good. If you've seen it and it's worth watching, let me know in the comments. Number five, a little more darker fantasy, Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury, a 1962 novel. I've read a lot of Ray Bradbury. He leans a little more into sci-fi with some of his writings, but it's always got a fantastical element. This is no exception. And uh, again, a little walk on the darker side. So I find this one just, yeah. A good read. It's in my lane, not hard to get through, and I recommend it. Number four, Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein, 1961. This is one of the first books that I read that actually changed the way I looked at the world around me. And that's something you love when fantasy and science fiction, any speculative fiction can do for you. Shift your perspective. I, I found myself saddened when we get to the end of the story and I'm like, ah, oh, if only life could be like the character was trying to build around him an experience. But of course, humans are messy and it doesn't necessarily work out that way. Uh, finding a perfect utopia is never going to quite work for us in this world. Stranger in a Strange Land, give it a try if you've never read it. This one, it'll take you a little bit to get through because it's not as much in the style we're used to anymore, but I think it's a worthy endeavor. Number three, A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is the first of the Earthsea Quartet, I believe. There's four books here. This one came out in 1968. Again, I have to admit, I haven't read this one, but I know a lot about this series. Everybody does if you're a fantasy fan. It's one of those that inspired so many other authors and made some people lifelong fantasy readers. Somehow I missed it along the way. So I do have to fix that. But it's old school classic fantasy, and there's so much new stuff coming out. I've had trouble getting it high enough on my TBR. I'm pretty sure I'll enjoy it when I get to it. But nevertheless, as I look at how does it fit into the story that comes from the 60s, this seems right for it to be number three on the list. If you've read A Wizard of Earthsea and it should be number one from the 60s, well, let me know. Give me your thoughts. The last two on the list I've definitely read many times and enjoy them. And number two is Dune by Frank Herbert, published in 1965. You're going, Dune, isn't that sci-fi? Well, it's one of those that leans in between and brushes with both genres. So sci-fi fantasy for sure. Thus, I think it's appropriate to put it on my fantasy list. It is a foundational novel for readers of both genres inspiring so many to want to just consume as much as they can, including a ton of Dune books. They're still writing Dune books because people just are hungry for this. And of course, the most recent movie adaptations, part one, part two, amazing films based on this book and the incredible imagination of Frank Herbert. I first read this back in my 20s and have read it multiple times since. I'm probably due for another read. It's just a great story. Okay. 
But number one on my list, I've actually read again not too long ago, Dragonflight. Book one of The Dragon Riders of Pern by Anne McCaffrey. This came out in 1968, although it originally came out in two parts in magazines back in 1967. And so successful, then she added a little more to tie the stories together into one novel that was published in 68. Anne McCaffrey was a science fiction writer. And technically, Dragonflight is a science fiction novel, but it reads and feels like fantasy. Everyone thinks of it as fantasy. So it's going on the fantasy list. And it's number one, the Pern books. You're going to see more Pern books in my series, I'm going to admit. Not every Pern book, but as I move through future decades, Pern will pop up again. These are just great reads, a delightful story, an incredible story arc that Anne McCaffrey envisioned and brings to life. Well, there's my list for today. What do you think? Use the comment box. Tell me what's too high. What's too low? Tell me what's missing. There's other books in the 60s that I'm not familiar with at all that maybe should have been on this list. I'm ready to see your thoughts and I will respond. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, don't forget to like the episode. And if you haven't subscribed, we'd love if you did that and hit that notification bell and you'll see when other things come out, including the next few episodes in these decades series. I'm going all the way to modern times. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.